Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm using Roam Research and Audible to essentially take book notes on the books that I'm listening to on Audible. But before I begin, if there's one thing that you could do today that would be considered productive is to just get an Audible subscription because ever since I've gotten an Audible subscription, it's like made my day so much more productive because I can club listening to books with every other thing there is that I'm doing, which could be running, walking, I don't know, doing dishes, a bunch of other things that just makes your day more productive because you can club these two activities. And at the end of the day, even if your day has been relatively unproductive, you know that you've listened to some books and you've just learned something that is cool. So let's get right to it. Whenever I'm on the move or not on my desk, I prefer to take notes on my phone. Earlier I was taking notes on Apple Notes or Bear or some other note-taking app, but having that was essentially creating a lot of problems because I didn't have an integrated workflow of how to take those notes, have that on any app in my computer so that I'm able to seamlessly sync the two notes and process them deeper on my computer whenever I do have the time. But these days I'm using Roam Research's iOS app. Well, they haven't actually released an app, but there is a workaround which allows you to add Roam Research to your home screen and that just makes things infinitely easier. So I've been listening to Zero to One by Peter Thiel and I know I'm a bit late on the bandwagon, but a friend actually recommended this book to me and, and you know, it's better late than never. So here I am taking notes on Peter Thiel's book. And once I'm done with that, every two or three days, whenever I get more time, I want to just go down to my computer take some time out and actually flesh these notes out and make them more permanent in my quote-unquote digital garden. Something that I've talked about in one of my previous videos using Andy Matushuk's evergreen note-taking system. Doing this allows me to process my notes deeper, think better, refine my thinking and actually understand the book at a deeper level rather than just retaining the stuff that was written in the book. And once I'm done with that, once I have some time, I'll now get to my desktop and show you how I actually flesh these notes out using the evergreen note-taking system and cloud them in my book notes page in Rome Research. So I have all my book notes right over here under the quick capture section of Rome Research. I think these are all book notes from chapter one and the preface of the book. And as you can see, these are pretty, pretty rough. Nothing is fleshed out. Everything is just right there like a brain dump. So what I now want to do is, you know, that's the beauty of Rome Research, that you can just start typing without having to worry about the structure, the hierarchy, and how things are organized. And you can be confident about the fact that things will be stored and structured in a way that you will be able to retrieve your notes later on. So I already have a page called Book Notes, and I'm just going to reference that over here. And after I do that, well, I see that there are many references over here of the book notes that I've taken previously. I wish I would have started this sooner rather than later, but I only have a few books over here. Um, but, but in any case, so that's something that I've created. Now I'm just going to type the title of the book, which is Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Book recommended by Arth Gupta, who's a friend of mine. All right, so now that I have this, I just want to look at these notes and just start processing, thinking about them, and just taking a few notes that I think will make more sense. Now I'm just going to use the evergreen note-taking system to actually think about the notes and process them and write them in my own words, which is the whole point of this entire note-taking saga, if I can call that. So in the book, Thiel says that every moment in the world, every defining moment only happens once. And as soon as I look at this, I see that this is a clause that I feel could be useful later on. So I'm just going to create an atomic evergreen note that I may reference at some point later. And that's again the beauty of Rome Research, that you don't have to worry about creating these quote-unquote empty pages, because later on whenever you are, let's say, typing something, let's say I type hashtag AR, whenever I tap in any random letters also, I know that everything will show up that may be useful at that point of time. So just creating this note and not remembering it or not thinking about it later just allows you to take notes on the fly without having to worry about how are you going to organize that? So that's what I wrote over here in the book. Thiel says that every moment in the world, every defining moment only happens once. The next Bill Gates is not going to be the founder of Microsoft, etc., etc. 
he talks about the paradox of entrepreneurship and says that it's rather unique how well now this is something that I am not remembering exactly so what I'm going to do is I am going to open audible over here and I'm just going to reference the preface of the book and see if there's something that I find useful over here. The paradox of teaching entrepreneurship is that such a formula necessarily cannot exist because every Yeah, so he says that the paradox of entrepreneurship is that such a formula can necessarily not exist because every innovation is new. Innovation is new and unique. No word can prescribe in concrete terms how to be innovative. Indeed, the single most powerful pattern that I've noticed is that successful people find value in unexpected places. And they He talks about the paradox of entrepreneurship and says that it's rather unique how innovation and entrepreneurship cannot be taught as such because there is no predefined well that's redundant there is no defined formula of entrepreneurship and again this is something that i find to be atomic so i'm just going to create a note for that also all right, so that's for the preface. I don't think I have any more useful stuff over here. Let's see, what, what next stuff do I have? All right, he starts with chapter one now. Um, what important truth do fear a few people agree with you on? In chapter one, chapter one, Feel begins by asking the question, what important truth do very few people agree with you on? He says that this book is an exercise in thinking more than an, more than an exercise in how to build companies. Because again, And this is where I'm referencing something that I've created previously. There is no defined formula of entrepreneurship. And this is how your evergreen note-taking system matures over a period of time, because the more and more you discover connections between the stuff that you've written already and the stuff that you're writing now, the deeper your thinking gets and the more useful it is in the medium to the long term. Um, in chapter one, it begins. All right, what more do we have? He says that courage is more valuable and rare than genius. There is horizontal progress and vertical progress. Horizontal progress is 1 to n and vertical progress is 0 to 1 and at times i think it's useful to just forget about the rules of english language because you really want to make your notes useful so even though this may not be grammatically correct or may not be as accurate as I usually want my writing to be. As long as the note that you're referencing is atomic and has other notes linked to it, like in this case, I have horizontal progress is one to n, which doesn't quite make sense with the other clause, vertical progress is zero to one and having an and between them. But as long as it's an atomic evergreen note that references other notes and that could be valuable in the long term, I think having that is absolutely okay. Your notes need not be something that's ready to be published. They're all working notes and the, the more you can do that, the better it actually is. So yeah, there's horizontal progress, which is one to n and vertical progress, which is zero to one. And why is that the case? Well, globalization, which has happened since Kissinger opened doors to China has resulted in sameness of a lot of things. In a lot of things. There is more convergence in the world.
China is one such example of why there is more convergence in the world. Because Thiel says that China ends up copying whatever there is in the world and makes that low cost and affordable. Um, so that's what we know so far. But globalization and sameness and convergence alone will not result in the next Microsoft, Facebook, or Google. Because again, there is no defined formula of entrepreneurship. So now I can see how the connections are being formed in my mind, which is incredibly just insightful, even as I type this. You have to differentiate yourself. And differentiation happens because of startups. This is again that I think can be an evergreen atomic note. So you have to differentiate yourself and differentiation happens because of startups. Um, startup thinking is rare. Startup is the largest group of people you can convince to build a different future. In contrast, a large organization is at times not successful or innovative because of bureaucratic hurdles. Similarly, just one person by himself would not be able to make much of a difference. Hence, startup, startup thinking is valuable. Startup thinking is rare and differentiation happens because of startups. So while it's referencing the same things that we have talked about earlier, doing this deliberately allows me to deepen connections in the brain, which is just incredibly useful and insightful. So yeah, it just took me about five to seven minutes to just consolidate these notes from the preface and chapter one. And now I have many nodes in my brain, which I can just reference and point to later on whenever I want to create a new blog post, an article, write something, make a video about something, or even just think about something. And this is why Rome Research allows you to be in to be in a state of idea abundance because you have all of these notes somewhere or the other and the moment you have some inspiration and you want to just dive into one specific aspect of any particular concept or idea that you have taken notes on previously, Rome Research just beautifully enables that. So that's why I think that this integrated workflow that I've just recently thought of, of having Audible, using Rome Research's Quick Capture, and then consolidating my notes using Evergreen Notes has just been fantastic. Thank you for watching.